today I'm going to try to figure out what's going on with the backup camera in my 2013 F-150 truck. Uh, here's the problem that I'm seeing. So I'm here, the truck is running. I'm going to put it in reverse. Normally it would turn on the uh, camera, but instead you have a delay and then this message, camera is unavailable, please contact your dealership. And when the problem first started, uh, it, the image itself just started getting degraded. It was kind of blue and grainy and then flickered some. And then it started uh, getting that message and it wouldn't come on at all. So here is what we are going to do. Uh, we are going to look at the diagnostic scan codes. I bought this uh, adapter for OBD2. Uh, I bought it, got this on Amazon. Uh, this is an ELM327. Uh, module here, so we are going to see what codes, uh, if any, are present in the system. Okay, so we're going to get the codes. To do that, we'll plug in the uh, adapter here to the port. Oops. This particular adapter is a Wi-Fi version, so now we'll start the engine. And on this laptop here, we can uh, try to connect to the adapter for the Wi-Fi. There it is, Wi-Fi ODB2. So let's connect. All right, so we're connected and the program I'm gonna use here is called Forescan. Uh, it's made specifically for Ford and Mercury and a couple other models. So let's launch this. And it's going to uh, do a scan here. So how about when the scan's done, we'll show the results. So the scan's completed and it looks like we did find some diagnostic codes. So let's go here into DTC. In the APIM code C1001 vision system camera, that looks like we're looking for general electrical failure. Uh, so it says that uh, we do have a camera failure. The other code that it found here was in the body module. Uh, where it's B10F1. Uh, it says there's a circuit short to ground or open. I don't think that this is uh, what's causing my problem today. I, this, uh, I've seen this before and I think this is not uncommon, but uh, nevertheless, I'll try to figure it out at some point. I don't think I'm gonna do that today, so. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna run a self-test for the APIM. And so, uh, get that started here. Usually kind of does some weird things in the uh, interface as it's running. So there, it found the, uh, it did find the camera error code again. And uh, it's all done. So let's go look and see what this code means. Okay, here looking at the shop manual, uh, that's the only code listed for the video, and it uh, gives you a it gives you a list of uh, uh, tests you can do. These are mostly electrical, uh, you know, checking for continuity, voltage, and whatnot. So we'll do that next. One thing to note, though, is that uh, if you look at the uh, camera instructions, um, taking off this Ford emblem in the back breaks the tab, so you have to replace the emblem. So I'm going to go ahead and order another one of those. Uh, and then we'll get started. So here back at the back of the truck for the camera uh, as I noted before the to take to access the camera to probe in there and look at it you have to uh, remove this emblem and that breaks it. So I did buy a replacement one uh, and also it looks I think the uh, the code that we have here is pretty generic and most of the time just means the camera is bad so I went ahead and just ordered another camera um, we'll make double check that that's what we need here as we uh, look at this so I'm going to remove the emblem and go from there so I got the uh, emblem off it as promised it did break the uh, the clips on it uh, on the back so uh, and that exposed uh, there's two of these screws with a nut driver 932nd to take it off and that uh, with that you can pull the whole, whole module out here so next I'm going to unplug it and then uh, we'll do some probing on the connector there
So since I have a new camera here, I decided a quick test. I just plugged the uh, other camera in here. I haven't taken the old camera out of the mounting bracket yet, um, but uh, I, uh, let's go in and see if this one works as is. All right, so uh, in the car, the truck again, the engine's running. Let's see if that new camera turns on. It does, so obviously it's not mounted, so it looks a little crazy, but uh, I think that short circuit some of the, I don't have to go through all the rest of the debug steps. That uh, seems to work. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that new camera mounted and installed. I'm taking another shortcut here. Here's the old um, piece, the old camera still mounted in there. Uh, actually, when I ordered the new emblem, I didn't have confidence that I'd be able to take the emblem off without um, without breaking uh, this uh, as well, the mounting bracket as well. So I ordered that. Uh, it was you know like thirty dollars maybe. Um, and so instead of taking this one out, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use this newer model. Looks like there's just some one uh, one screw to take out there to mount it in there. And so I'm going to use the new part instead. Got the new camera mounted on there. It was really easy. There's really only one way it could go in there and secured it. Uh, and then I mounted it back on uh, here. Um, so let's make sure the new emblem fits on there. And it does. So, all right. Uh, I think we're done out here. So I'm back here in the truck and uh, I'm doing running another scan here. I uh, want to make sure everything is checks out. First of all, as you can see, yes, when we put it in reverse, you see there is an obstruction there and the camera seems to be working. Good thing I had the camera there and was not backing up. Uh, so when we do the scan, it looks like it, um, let's go ahead and, uh, and uh, clear this code. And C1001, uh, let's go down here to reset that. So I'll reset the codes for this module. And then, uh, so now we have no codes there. Uh, I want to uh, go ahead and uh, run the uh, self-test for this module. Which is pretty quick. All right, no codes found, good. Uh, and then finally, I wanted to go into, um, there's a option to uh, configure the cam real camera calibration. So let's try that and make sure that this passes. Rear camera calibration, make sure the following conditions are met, parked and the battery's charged, yes. So it is now executing that. It's going to take a little while, so I will uh, come back when it is done. The calibration finished uh, successfully. Yeah, the only thing, it, it had me turn the uh, engine off with the key in the on position to finish it. And so it looks like I'm good to go here. Uh, got the guidelines on the video, got the, the no more diagnostic codes, and everything's working. So uh, I think we'll call this one done. Hope you found this video useful as I've been figuring out what's wrong with this camera. Uh, if you did find it useful, go ahead and like and leave comments below. Uh, uh, if you found anything I did wrong or did stupid, let me know that as well. Thanks a lot.